Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Akabane101, and welcome to Death Stranding. This is the version of the game for PC, which comes included with a bunch of pre-order bonuses, as well as the very hard difficulty, which I can only assume they're going to add that to the PS4 version. Uh, I put about 200 hours into the PS4 version. I played it entirely on hard mode, which at the time was the hardest mode. So I'm excited to finally go into this and see what very hard mode is all about. However, I would like to explain what the game is for anyone that is curious. Of course, I'm not trying to sell you on the game, but it's a game that a lot of people seem to have misconcepts, uh, misconceptions rather about. Uh, rather, they would just say it's, it's just a walking simulator. Yes, movement is very important. It has some of the best movement mechanics in any game I've seen. Um, where, you know, you have your dear Esthers and things like that, where all you're doing is holding down W, or all you're doing is holding down the left stick. And this one, you have to focus on the terrain. It's the only game out there that will actually make you focus on terrain that isn't a racing game. Uh, and you have to be very careful about how you position your feet, how you hold on to the straps on your suit, uh, what uh, exoskeletons to bring, uh, is there, what waypoint you're going to make. Because uh, the game does not have an auto waypoint system. It's all set up by the player and how they want to go about it. Uh, are you going through a BT zone? Uh, are you going through a mule zone? Are you going through a terrorist zone? <laughs> and are you going to have to fight them? Are you going to have to deal with them? Are you going to bring guns, explosives? Are you going to kill them? If you kill them, are you going to bring them to the incinerator? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there are so many cool things here. And that's not even including the stranding system, which the best way I can describe it is essentially, you know, the messaging system in Dark Souls. It's essentially that expanded upon uh, tenfold. Uh, essentially, the, the paths that you take, your footprints are saved and uploaded to other players via the strand system because uh, you're all connected through that system. And uh, essentially, you walk the path. It's the most rigorous, right? You're the first one to walk the path. It's extremely difficult. There's rocks everywhere. You're tripping over yourself because of the rocks. But the next person that goes by doesn't have those rocks because your character cleared them out. And then the person after that, or even if it's you coming back, now it's a dirt road, and it's a lot easier to drive bikes on. Now that bikes have been driving down that road, now it's a wider dirt road for trucks. And you can see that's really valuable there, just alone for trails being made. But it goes even deeper. We have buildings, we have structures that you can create, and these will be saved and carried over to other players. Uh, a lot of time you'll see a lot of structures from similar players because you're connected to one player more than another, especially if you give them a lot of likes. There's a like system in the game, all that dopamine uh, filled system in there, uh, which is always fun. So you can like their structures and a lot of time you'll find more of that person's structures in the world as well. Uh, any repelling ropes that you leave behind, any ro or ladders that you leave behind, uh, they will be available to other players. So essentially, something that was being used for yourself is going to be used for another player. So that's the stranding system, essentially. You don't see other players, but everyone is still working together towards the greater good, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, it's definitely one of my favorite games of last year. Again, 200 hours thrown into it. I don't know if I like it more than Iceborne. I don't know if I like it more than DMC5 or Resident Evil 2, but I think it's still like one of the best games I played last year and probably the game I put the most time in, save for maybe Iceborne. So, there you go. And of course, directed by Hideo Kojima, art director Yoji Shinkawa. Fantastic art. They went to Iceland and remade America in Iceland form. I don't know. It's crazy. Okay, I don't understand it, but okay. And then Ludwig Forsell did the main soundtrack. And also, if you see a bunch of ads in this video, they're probably not mine because all these videos are going to get copyright claimed by their copyright holders um, because there's a bunch of copyright music in this game. And I don't want to remove it. I can remove it through YouTube's removal system. But then it completely ruins the theme of the game uh, and the tone set for it. Anyway, the game does support... High frame rate. We go to graphics here. We can see max frame rate at 120. Uh, this is simply for OBS's sake. I can go all the way up to 240 or whatever your refresh rate is on your monitor. I tried 4K. I tried recording at 4K. 
unfortunately, I can only hit like 45 FPS, which for me is fine because G-Sync is god tier. But for OBS and recording is terrible. It's a mistake. Don't do it. I don't recommend. <laughs> so uh, unless you're not recording, uh, don't do it. Few options here for graphics. Very high is the max. Memory streaming on high. Shadow resolution high. Ambient occlusion. Screen space. Really, it's just on or off for most of these things. Then we have Fidelity FX, which is like uh, upsampling and things like that. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm really happy that the game is not locked to 60, because MGSV was locked to 60 with the Fox engine, which means that this engine is even better than what people believe. So, good on the Killzone devs for being so good at making an engine. Anyway, let's go new game. Hopefully you guys use the timestamp feature in case you didn't want to listen to me explain the game to you. But, again, I just wanted to explain because the features of the game are really, really interesting. I really do enjoy them. And of course, it's a sci-fi game, so there's a lot of weird shit going on. And, uh, and futuristic post-apocalypse nonsense. So, yeah. It's a good time. I'm gonna start a brand new game here. Uh, we originally played on hard mode, which is recommended for action gamers. Completing the game at this difficulty requires a variety of skills, but will provide a true sense of accomplishment. I still found this to be rather easy. Uh, so I'm excited to see what Very Hard's like. Recommended for those who are particularly good at action games, deliveries, and battles will be more challenging. But completing the game at this difficulty level will make you envy, make you the envy of all your fellow porters. All right. And we'll play with large text size so you guys can see the subtitles even better. So, general rule of thumb for these types of playthroughs, I don't talk during the cutscenes. Um, this game is very cutscene heavy in the beginning, and then there's a massive middle part where there's, like, no cutscenes whatsoever for a solid, like, 40 billion hours. Uh, so enjoy the cutscenes as we go into it, and then we'll be playing a lot, which is really cool. All right, there we go. Uh, by the way, choosing your birthday in a game will just affect one cutscene when your birthday comes up. Uh, so I highly recommend, if you're going to be playing on your birthday, uh, just go ahead and go into one of the inns. <laughs> I call them the inns. I forget the name of them, actually. It's like, you know, whatever the uh, the areas are for you to rest. Go into those areas, enter and leave, and you should be able to get a cutscene for that. Higher levels of Doom's abilities have been observed in those born under constellations such as Cancer, Pisces, Sadus, Delphinus, and Gigas. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave birth to time and space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which set a planet spinning in that space. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. Must be 
also like to point out that this game does come with the Japanese voiceover if you so prefer, although it was originally voiced in uh, English, obviously, Norman Reedus being the main character, uh, is American, so, you know, although he did uh, live in Japan for a while, pretty cool. Uh, so as you can see here, we can lift up the smart drugs, and we have a backpack on us right now, or well, not a backpack, but rather one of our delivery items. Uh, so since we crashed the bike, we have to go pick everything back up. Very nice. Fortunately, the bike completely destroyed. It's a long way down. It sure is. So, uh, if we hit our scanner here, you'll be able to see the terrain. Anything that is marked in blue is safe to walk over. You won't trip. But anything that's red is definitely something that's potential to trip over. And yellow is a chance to trip over, depending on how you're going about it. I believe yellow is more so referring to if you're sprinting. So if we're just running around like this, it's fine. Um, but if we're sprinting like this, you could potentially trip over the yellow markings there. And then there's also the red markings as well. Now, how do you avoid tripping? Well, you just want to grip on to your straps with LT and RT. Left trigger, right trigger. I'm sure there's also controls for this on PC. All the controls are fully rebindable too. Controller or PC, whatever it is. Uh, or sorry, controller or keyboard and mouse. We hold triangle here, though. Or a circle, was it? Oh, I don't want to rest. How do you, uh... Oh, is he not allowed to drop his stuff right now? Well, that sucks. 
Well, I'm just gonna go jump off the side because there is a nice little bonus if you do. My damage my gear, but that's okay. This is partially the uh, the death mechanic. It sounded a lot cooler uh, when it first was announced that you would be swimming around to try and find your corpse uh, and then reclaiming all your items that you lost. But you do reclaim your items, and you can reclaim items of other players that have died in the area. But the repatriation is called to uh, come back to life. bit different than later in the game. And that doesn't get explained until we beat the game, so I just wanted to show it off. And then we vomit these things on the ground. Oh, thankfully it doesn't damage my gear. So... So what just happened there is we threw up Crypto Biotes, which seems to be Sam Porter's, like, main food line. His favorite food of all time, type thing. Uh... I don't know what they taste like, but they look gross. Maybe if you like the taste of centipedes, you'll probably love that shit. Uh, but essentially, we need to find all of our items before we move on, because then we get a S rating. You're ranked on your deliveries, and in this case, it's a tutorial. So they're just trying to teach you everything, get you nicely into it. Again, you have to understand there is momentum in the game. And you're starting to notice that the item that we just picked up is a little rusty, but the items that are on our back are getting very rusty. That's because the rain that we're in is called Timefall, and it accelerates the age of everything in the area. Uh, including the packaging that is designed to protect against Timefall, but only for so long. And it's going to become brittle, and essentially, once it's fully rusted, a single fall could essentially damage all the goods inside by 100%. And you are rated based on the, the goods inside the boxes, not the integrity of the boxes on the outside. Uh, let's continue on here and get our first, uh, or I guess our second cutscene in this case. Unless there's another box. By the way, get used to the scanning noise. It's going to be used all the time by me because I am... A coward, and I don't want to look for things on my own. Good way out the rain over there.
I think they're gone. <laughs> what the hell? Didn't mean to grab you so hard. Tears. A chiral allergy. So, you have dooms, like me. I've got the extinction factor, but I think you got me beat. What's your level? You can see them, right? No, but I can sense them. Level two, then. What are you doing here? Trying to stay dry. Same as you. Time falls let up. My name is Fragile. Yeah, I've heard of you. <laughs> that right? Sam Porter Bridges. The man who delivers. Come work for me? Must be tough out here on your own. Yeah, I thought the Fragile Express had plenty of people. Plenty of traitors. Not much left of us now, save for a few honest folks. And on top of that, not much left of me either. Got soaked from neck to toe. I can't help you with that. I make deliveries. That's all. This is Bridges Central Dispatch. Freelance contractor Sam Porter Bridges. Receiver is standing by for drop. Headed into town. Watch yourself. Those things never stay gone for long. Time full fast forwards whatever it touches, but it can't wash everything away. The past just won't let go. I'll see you around. Sam Porter Bridges. Well, Sam is facing the wrong way because right behind him is goddamn tools. He just left them in there next to the deer. And those tears there are basically an allergic reaction to those creatures that we saw. They're not crying, but I guess they are. Their tear ducts are opening because they're having a reaction. As well as uh, Sam also has a, a rash whenever that, something like that happens too. Pretty interesting. God damn, this game looks really good at high frame rate though. Holy shit. What we're doing right now is we're holding on to the straps. So as we go down these more steep hills, and oh, unfortunately the deer that escaped was hit by the time fall, spooked by those creatures, right? Ran away right into the time fall. Yeah, I'm holding the straps to try and keep myself from falling over. There's got to be one more item somewhere. One or two. There it is. I don't believe we can actually go back to where our bike was. 
So these rivers are relatively safe, even if they are yellow. Uh, it's the red ones where you have to be a little bit more careful because you can start losing things that aren't on your backpack. Everything that's on your backpack is secured by a strap. But things that are above your backpack, when we start overloading it, filling it with too many items, that's when we start running into those problems. Again, if you guys get a bunch of ads in this game, or uh, in this playthrough, it's probably not mine, because I only ever put one ad at the beginning. I can only imagine all the copyright claims I'm going to get because this game is like one big playlist. Goddamn good playlist at that, though. Iceland has never been a better place to explore than when it's America, apparently. <laughs> Obviously, Sam does not like the taste of uh, good old crypto biotes. Gotta be careful. Don't want to trip. It's okay to move slow in this game, unless you're trying to go fast. And even then, probably better to go slow. There we go. As you can see, it goes four deep. Then you have four, four small, sorry, you have eight small crates on your back, or four uh, medium crates, or two large crates. I don't think there's anything else. I sure hope I didn't miss anything, man. Don't be so I feel like I did miss something, though. Don't be so you see where he's losing balance every now and again? And I'm not even sprinting. If I was sprinting, he'd gain, like, some serious momentum. And he can go ludicrously fast. So oh, that right there was a double jump. You can only do it by sprinting and having enough momentum. Really, really nice stuff for uh, trying to clear rivers. There they are, smart drugs, and then I think there might be another large item up ahead. You can see them denoted by the S or the L. Large is very heavy, and it's gonna make us very off balance. All right. This is arguably the worst part of the river, but the nice thing about it is that we can just stand still and get our stamina back. We do lose maximum stamina as we go along here, as denoted by the uh, checkered gray and blank uh, board on the side of the, the thing there. And the highlighted stamina is what we currently have left, and the dimmer stamina is what I can fill up to. Alright, so let's get our last small item here. I'm assuming this was all from the bike that fell. But this is essentially the minimum requirement. In my opinion. But even though you only need one item. You can really just have walked to the entrance here with just one item. I'm not running through this shit. No way in hell. Look at all the damn rocks. Alright, so these are some emergency provisions. These probably weren't related to me at all, considering they're lost cargo. And lost cargo is usually cargo from other porters. Uh, well, let me put it on my back. Excellent. All right. So now we're going to really start losing balance, because Sam, in his current state, doesn't have the gear to really be able to carry all this stuff. Beginning scan. Cargo verified. Thank you. So, as we'll see here, I'm going to actually start sprinting, and he'll start leaning over. And then I'm going to have to shift my weight left and right. So this is the fastest way to move in the game, but also the most dangerous. But because we're on flat terrain, this is relatively safe. Now you have to keep in mind that we're always building momentum. And because we're always building momentum, we can't just straight up stop, right? Especially when we start having some powered gear on, like some exoskeletons and stuff like that. Problems are going to start occurring. Uh, let's go hand this in, and we're going to have another major cutscene up ahead. So we delivered the requested cargo. Get used to this screen, as we're going to be doing this a lot. 
So this is a bunch of lost cargo that we found. Okay. And then the main order that we did is the smart drugs, which is the most important thing. Four of four. That's important. Uh, because then we get more likes. And likes are related to the RPG mechanics in the game, which it will increase uh, your stats, your abilities to be a better porter. It's cool. We got the achievement. Good Samaritan for that. What took you so long? It's not like the legend to come in late. Had to wait out the storm. Lost my bike. Sounds like you've been through the ringer. Luckily, our goods are in perfect condition. Well, you did keep us waiting, but everything else seems to be in perfect order, so great work. We'll be awaiting the next delivery. All right. And as you can see, so even though the rust level on all of our gear was getting pretty close to max, the only thing that matters is the internals. It never matters at all whatsoever if the container carrying the items is damaged or not uh, through the rain. And we get the S rank. And I got the achievement unlocked. Delivering is what I do. Hell yeah. Of course, there's an auto skip button and everything, but always nice to just show this off. Uh, so you get likes again. That's your EXP in the game. You get those from other players as well as the game itself by doing various deliveries. And of course, depending on how you deliver them, you'll get more or less. And you'll get this for all the things. And there you go. <laughs> I hit the auto skip because I'm like, even I'm like, oh, I've seen this too much. Uh, all right. So we are now level six. I forget what level I got on the PS4. A few hundred, anyway. Yes, we have a long way to go. We have Bridge Link, which is related to working with other players. We have Delivery Time, which is only leveled by doing Delivery Time quests. Uh, delivery Volume, which is always leveled by... Picking up more random items that are not from other players. Bridge Link also, I think, is related to uh, getting lost cargo from other players. And also helping build stuff with other players. I'm not sure. I think it actually is really just lost cargo from other players. Which we'll get into as we go on. Uh, miscellaneous. Uh, anything that we haven't covered so far. And then cargo condition, of course. that's um, That actually, I think, is related to fragile quests. But I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like cargo condition should just be leveling whenever we get 0% damage, but clearly, as we've seen here, we got 0% damage and we didn't level at all. But maybe that's just because it's the tutorial quest. Oh, damn. 74 kilograms! Don't worry. It gets even greater from there. Like, 300! Special commission for Sam Porter Bridges. Priority 1. Igor, Bridges Corpse Disposal. Sam Porter, I presume? Right. Not the touchy-feely type. Document said you had some kind of phobia. Bridges Corpse Disposal? What happened? Look, gotta get a move on. I'll explain as we go. Come on. Come and take a look. He's got a date with the incinerator. How long since he flatlined? 
We don't know the exact TOD, but I'd say it's been upwards of 40 hours. He wasn't quarantined. I'm not sick. This is a suicide. Oh, Jesus. We're just lucky we found him at all. Got him on ice ASAP, but who knows when he'll go necro. Where are you taking him? Uh, closest incinerators to the north. This route's crawling with PTs. Sure you can't use another? I wish I could, but there's no time. Then just burn the poor bastard right here. You put all that chirillum in the air so close to town? Can't do it. Better that than trying for the incinerator. Hey, we can do this. We just need someone like you with dooms. Well, he's already in the first stages of necrosis. If we don't hurry, this place is a crater. So how about it? Can we count on you? Then Bridges hereby enters into a contract with Sam Porter. Sam. Just Sam. And I can't spot BTs. Just sends them. That's why we came prepared. A bridge baby, huh? With its help and you, we'll be able to stay one step ahead of them. Makes me feel like shit every time. Well, you are plugging into the other side. Freaks me out, too. Roll out! different when I was a kid. America is a country. Anybody could go anywhere they damn well pleased. No need for couriers like yourself. We had highways, airplanes. Hell, you could even visit other countries. Hard to imagine it now. As you can see, the Death Stranding poked us full of holes. Fucked us beyond all recognition. And if you were lucky enough to survive, the time fall came and washed you away. Then those freaks from the beach showed up. The worlds of the living and the dead all mixed together. And that's when folks started holing up in the cities. Couriers like yourself got put up on a pedestal. How much further to the incinerator? This guy's about to pop. Shit. We're gonna have to cut to the BTs. right where they want us. Get us out of here. Sam, can you see anything? No, nothing. <sighs> this BB must be Buster or something.
they're here.
bridges falling down my fair lady And once again, we're thrown into the repatriation. So in this case, there are no other players that we can bump into. As you can see, all the uh, silhouettes here are unable to get close to me because they are purposefully being shoved back. But later on, we can actually connect with other players and even recover their lost cargo. Just kind of cool. Once there was an explosion, a bang which gave rise to life as we know it. And then came the next explosion. An explosion that will be our last. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, with that, we are going to wrap up this episode of Death Stranding. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, there's quite a lot of story in the beginning part, and then it kind of just cuts to just pure gameplay for hours and hours and hours. So once we get there, there will be a lot of fun things to do. Uh, but for the meantime, let us embrace the weirdness. And uh, I really do like the, the lore presented here on the... Uh, the way that these BTs, these beached things, as they will later be called, uh, are all about. They're really, really interesting. And there's tons of emails that we'll be reading and, uh, things like that. Was it emails and, uh, database entries for us to learn pretty much 100% of what the hell is actually going on here. So, hope you guys will stick with me, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.